That's funny that you say the people talking you out of it, because uh, that was a big thing. People were like, oh, it's so expensive. <laughs> I'm so stoked right now to be interviewing one of my really good friends and uh, owner of Dead Rockers here in Long Beach. I've been waiting for this for quite some time. <laughs> uh, it took a lot out of me to ask you to be able to do this and everything else. Which is weird because we've known each other for like 16 years. I know, right? But I'm just <laughs> I'm so not used to interviewing. Um, but basically, <laughs> tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, where were you born? Uh, Redondo Beach, California. Redondo Beach. You yeah. grew up there grew up spent my whole life there and uh now i live in san pedro and i have a store in long beach yeah, yeah. so migrating south <laughs> yeah exactly you went to redondo that's how we met that's we went to we redondo met. high school yeah met freshman year we were uh one of a handful of punk rockers so we just kind of gravitated towards hanging there was out like together. five of us seriously. there was like five of us and it was like oh we should be friends yeah so <laughs> just all kind of yeah, the background story, though, you, you grew up in Redondo. Um, you come from a background of entrepreneurs, right? Like your grandpa was a business owner. Yes. Um, I was, well, I was raised by my mom. She was a single mother, so she was a total hustler and worked like, you know, had a real estate license, a notary public license, but she was a full-time real estate agent and like yeah awesome. she was just a hustler so i definitely learned that early on if you want things you need to go out and get them and you need to work for them yeah um my dad was not really in my life growing up but later on i started working for him uh in my like mid 20s yeah, yeah. and Doing what? um I ran his office. He has a manufacturing company that did start with my great grandfather. Yeah. Uh, my great grandfather and my grandfather invented a uh, vegetable cutter machine, mainly because That's my so cool. grandma <laughs> wanted an easier way to cut uh, potatoes to make French fries. That's awesome. So they made it, and then it became a thing to start making for restaurants. Um, so, and my grandpa was a machinist, so it was like kind of all around machine shop, and yeah. uh, they started that in 1938. So, yeah, later my dad took over, and then um, both of my brothers have worked there, and I ran the office. But for at what time. age did you start working? Because, as soon, like, as soon as my I earliest know. memories of you is you were already working, you're already doing stuff. Like. Yeah, I, um, I got a work permit in high school. That's so, cool. <laughs> yeah, 15. Wow. 15. Um, and you're driving at 16. I remember that. You're yeah. like the first one that had a three days a car. after my 16th birthday. Yeah. I got my license. I couldn't wait to drive. Yeah, I yeah. I, I remember going to, to like go. gigs and stuff and everything. <laughs> it was so awesome. I had places to go. Um, but yeah, so my first job was at Pizza Hut, <laughs> and I would cut the pizzas when they came out of the oven and like clean tables and like it. It was Saturday and Sunday only because I was still in high school, and um, it was a paycheck. There it is. That's how I paid my car insurance. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I remember going to gigs and stuff with you. So what brought you into, like, the punk rock world? How did you discover that? Because that's I how mean, we I met, you know? I definitely always gravitated towards, like, rock and roll. And I, both of my sisters were into punk. Um... But neither of them lived with me because they were so much older. Yeah. So I don't remember um, ever seeing them around. I didn't meet them till way I later. I remember getting like a Punk and Drublick, uh, the, <laughs> the No Effects Punk and Drublick CD. Yeah. But also like Punkorama was big. Remember? Oh yeah, 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 like, yeah. Samplers? All the compilations. Yeah, and, stuff. and like yeah. you'd get those. And Great like, introduction. Oh, I like that song. That band was cool. And then you yeah. kind of like, you know, find out about bands and stuff from that. But. Um, I don't know if I can pinpoint, like, the one time that, yeah. you know. Well, I just like hearing just, it, like, kind of gravitating towards it. I did go to Warp Tour. Oh, wow, I was in, like, yeah. seventh grade, and yeah. that was, like, an eye-opening thing. I was like, wow, this is 
This is it. Badass. Yeah. yeah. Um, she so kind of pulled was, you towards it, huh? Yeah. And then um, my other sister took me to Ozfest, and that was like exposure to metal and like just I don't know. I've always been into music, and yeah. then you just gravitate towards. What yeah. You like. It's kind of. Well, you start like finding it. out about different bands. You start getting more into it, and everything yeah. else. You start like it becomes like this whole like discovery factor where you're like, oh man, this check out this band, check out that band, and everything else. And oh, I remember totally. we were always exchanging music. Yeah, and, big time. Like we discovered like the Subhumans and stuff like that, and that right. was like game changer. Then the Devotchkas. Oh yeah. You remember the all that? Years were just, big for us. Yeah, we loved <laughs> the punk core years. Um, yeah. And then we started getting into like British stuff a lot. Yeah. I remember with with all of our little group of friends, we'd be like, oh, this band was rad, this band was rad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what got you thinking about getting Dead Rockers started? What was it? Was it originally Dead Rockers or how did it that... was? It was always Dead Rockers. Uh-huh. Um, it came from an uproar song. <laughs> oh, no shit. Yeah, I was really into uproar at the time. I didn't even know that. a song called Dead Rockers, and that's where we got the name from. Um, awesome. Which, actually, I went to see them one year, yeah. and they played it, and I, like, talked to them after the show and gave them, like, flyers and stickers, and they thought it was really cool. Oh, that's that so was really sick. rad, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was always called Dead Rockers. I mean, honestly, growing up in Redondo, there wasn't, like, places to go buy stuff. You drove to Hollywood, yeah. or there was one place um, in Hermosa called Restyle, and they had clothes and stuff, but they didn't have remember music. That. You yeah. Know? So you could buy, like, creepers and, like, stud belts and stuff, but it was pretty limited. Yeah. Um, it was more of, like, the alternative fashion. Yeah. It had some punk rock stuff. They had fishnets and stuff like that. But, yeah. But um, it was kind of expensive, too. Yeah. But... Yeah, I remember. But rad store so we would go there um but other than that and then they closed down when we were like 18 19 yeah. so and then you had to go to all the way to, to, hollywood. Go to hollywood and then a lot of the stores up there were closing down too but they were all on melrose i'm sure their rent was insane yeah. and you know it's alternative scene people aren't generally known for spending tons of money in there you know so yeah. um how did you start what was the first thing you started carrying or what did you I think it was band shirts. Yeah. It was band shirts, and then, yeah, we had some belts. Um, some patches belts and stuff and like that, Belts and patches and CDs. I started yeah. ordering from, like, record labels. Um, and then, yeah, I started doing, like, pop-ups and stuff, uh, car shows. I used to do the roller derby. Yeah, I remember. Events a lot. Um Anywhere that would really just let me set up. You what, know? what year was this when you when you started it? Was it was 2005. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's when I first started doing it. And that was, uh, MySpace was big then, too. So oh, my that God, was I my loved first. MySpace. I mean, we all liked MySpace. It you was get like to customize your page and everything. Top friends, all that. Dude, way better than Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was big, too. I started selling through MySpace. That yeah. was, like, my first uh, way to sell online. And that's I always awesome. kind of thought that selling online was going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Like, once MySpace started coming out and, like, people just really started yeah the importance of the internet yeah you know? and I, I wish like, I would have adapted that quickly I was still lugging around records and stuff like that I didn't if I would have <laughs> had an online presence it would have been different but I was just thinking about music at the time yeah. yeah I mean and plus living somewhere where you had to drive a ways to get yeah. stuff it was like well you can order it and have it delivered to you yeah like that game changer works Hell yeah. you know so I always thought that was a good idea so it's been online since it started. Yeah. Um, and it always, like, on social media and stuff. And then my first website was a Joomla Virtue Mart. It was, um, which was at the time, like, a, a cool thing. Yeah. I had a friend that went to ITT Tech, and um, oh wow, <laughs> he, he helped me build the website. Yeah. For, but he was still learning everything, so it was a learning thing for him. It was a oh, learning cool. thing for me. That's awesome. Later, it got hacked, and it was terrible. But, um, hey, you got to learn somehow, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now I use Shopify, and I've been using Shopify for years now, and it's amazing uh we use it for the pos system in the store cool, too cool. so um i mean the software now is just it's come a long way in 15 years so all right so yeah. you got the retail stuff going you got band shirts going you're doing all the pop-up shops it's starting to get serious when did you start deciding or when did you think about having a retail store brick and mortar shop and i'm sure you got a lot of like people trying to talk you out of that because that's a huge jump from a pop-up shop to going brick and mortar and i'm sure people were concerned for you you know (laughs) trying to talk you out of it and everything else so what was that transition how was that that's funny that you say the people talking you out of it because um 
that was a big thing. People were like, oh, it's so expensive. Yep. And like with the internet going the way that it was, people were also like, is that a good idea? Maybe you should just keep the online store. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, as, as a kid, I wanted to go somewhere. And even as an adult, like I, I like to go and touch things, especially with like clothes, you want to try it on or like to go yeah. into a store like this was so exciting for me growing yeah. up. And you wanted to be in there like and you shop. wanted to like, and it's like this energy and like-minded people. And yeah, like it yeah. Was, it was you always really, run into people. Yeah, and, yeah. It was, you learned about new bands. I mean, it was just... Yeah. It was, a, you find products that you'd never see otherwise. Yeah. Because it's small companies. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but I first started, I mean, it was always like, oh, that would be cool to have one day. You know, mm -hmm. it was always in the back of my mind, but I knew it was something that, you know, wasn't going to be attainable for a long time because money and all that. But, um. What year did you open? Well, I opened that small store inside of like an indoor swap meet in Wilmington. Um, oh, I forgot that? all about that. Yeah. So Holy that shit. was in like, 2009, 10 ish, yeah. around there, and the rent was cheap, but you know it wasn't in a great area. And um, did it do well? Or the girl that I had, I mean, we always paid the bills and everything like that. But the girl that was working with me at the time, like she had kids, so like if she couldn't be there, you know, it just I couldn't be there because I had another job. It yeah. just didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. Um, but. Um, after that, I closed that. It was about a year, year and a half that I was there, and I closed that. And then about a year or two later, I got the opportunity to start sharing the shop mm -hmm. uh, with my friend Jaime, who was in... in I, I didn't actually know him. I was, like, introduced by a mutual friend. Yeah. And he had more, like, a skate shop, yeah, like, graffiti-style stuff. stuff. So our vibes were, like, totally different. But we started sharing the shop, and, yeah. like, he, like, kind of subleased me for a little while. Um and, and it worked, you know. Where I mean, was that? That was. It was here. Oh, it was, it was right here, right? Okay, in yeah. This exact space. Oh shit. Um, and then we moved next door, like right next door. Yeah. Um, so we were in here for like a year and a half, two years, and then we moved in there for about a year and a half, two years, and then this space opened up, and he started doing like screen printing and stuff, so he didn't yeah. really need a storefront anymore. Um, so I came in here on my own, and mm -hmm. I was like so nervous about it because I had never had like. A whole thing of rent on my own before yeah. and I was only really it's a whole open different level. on the weekends because I worked Monday through Friday mm -hmm. so it was like well am I gonna hire people you know yeah it was it was a lot but um I'm glad that I took the leap and for the first yeah. year and a half I was only open the weekends yeah and I remember I started opening more when I feel like the demand grew mm -hmm. I'm not a risk taker at all I yeah. don't like Jump well, that's out a huge of planes. Risk, I'm not <laughs> into like thrill seeking and stuff, but yeah. I do feel like I did it in the slowest way possible. Yeah. And it worked for me. Yeah. Like I definitely see a lot of people just want to like quit their job and throw themselves into it. And yeah. as awesome as that sounds, they don't understand the they work usually behind fail. everything. Yeah. They like, usually fail. There's no, there's, you know, your store's not making money right away. It's yeah. paying the bills and floating itself, but it's yeah. not going to support you, especially if you have a family or anything yeah. like that. So I think that that was a really big thing for me that I yeah. knew I had to, I knew I had to keep working, you yeah. know? So I would be here on the weekends and then eventually I hired someone like for Thursday, Friday mm -hmm. and slowly did that. Yeah. Um, and now we're open. So you, six you kept days. easing into it before yeah. you went full time I with the shop. I took a lot of baby steps, yeah. for sure. Well, your timeline. I mean, people look at the shop and they think like, you just decided to open up a shop one day. Yeah. Everything's here. You're yeah. doing amazing, and it's really like you started this in high school, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. We were right still like just school. coming out of high school yeah. when you actually started all this. Yeah. It's like the overnight success story where people don't see like, you know, <laughs> people training yeah. forever or whatever it may be. Um, and I got to actually see you through this whole process and, you yeah. know, you were constantly working on this and bringing it to existence, which is so amazing, right? And that's why I wanted to interview you as, yeah. you know, <laughs> because I got to see it, which is really cool. Right. And I really, I think that story hands. is, yeah, I think that story is so important um, that, you know, you had this idea, you saw that, you know, you saw that, um, there was not a lot of shops around here. There was a demand for it. It was something that you kind of wanted to do in a way for yourself. Yeah. And, and by doing that, you gave back to the community out here because you're the only 
shop around here that's doing this. Yeah, it's crazy too because Long Beach has notoriously had a punk, like a huge punk scene forever. You know, like actually in the store we have like flyers of like Fender's Ballroom and stuff. Yeah, that were iconic, yeah. and it's cool because we get people that come in that are like, you know, sixties even, yeah. like older people, and they're like. Oh, I went to that show. Like, they oh, remember I saw the flash. It. Yeah. And then yeah. we get kids that are like, you know, 14 coming in, like saving up to buy their first, you know, Paradox or first, That's you cool. know, record. Or That's they so just cool. got a record player and they're stoked on yeah, it. They're all so. like, they just want the vinyl. Yeah. And, like, yeah. it's a trip how it spans so many mm -hmm. um, generations. But I feel that too because it's been a part of my life for so long. And yeah. I'm older than I was. And, you know, yeah. it's the same thing for me. But. People coming yeah. in, getting their first pair of docks and everything else. That's awesome to be yeah. part of that, too, you know? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. So you not only own Dead Rockers, but you have a couple other businesses. Tell us a little bit about that. I do have some small side projects. Um, yeah, small. <laughs> one of them is called Les Quillette, and um, yeah. it's a darker, uh, like a macabre boutique. I sell mm -hmm. artwork and uh, jewelry and... Um, I started making my own like enamel pins and smalls. I do antiques for it and stuff too. We do a lot of the oddities markets. So yeah, those have been awesome. Um, it's it's a different market. It's, it's a different vibe, mm -hmm. but I do have a small corner for it inside the store. And it's funny because some people are really into it, and some people it just freaks them out. Yeah. So it's weird because you like <laughs> it's a little a lot too of dark for some people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like a lot of people assume that they would go together, and they're. They're very separate. Yeah. You know? um, but it is something that I've always been drawn to darker things, and um, especially when it comes to like home decor and things like that. So it was something that I personally wanted, mm -hmm. and it just kind of developed into this whole other thing. And I do all online for that too. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, and you markets, do pop up shops with that. The I've seen that. The markets have been huge. Yeah. yeah, and this year I'm traveling a lot with it. We're doing Detroit, Buffalo, that's so awesome. Um, Tampa. So yeah, yeah, we have all over this year, which is really cool. And now that you have people at the shop, it frees you up to actually go out and do that yeah, stuff I can and go expand do the this. Pop ups and yeah, I have um, I have one all the time helper. And then I have one that is our backup girl here. So I have two people that help me now cool. here. So that's awesome. Um, and then I just recently started manufacturing my own line of clothes, which has been pretty cool. That uh, is but insane. But also a huge learning experience. That is insane. That is it. I didn't go to school to do this. Yeah. Like, I didn't go to design school. I didn't go. I dropped out of college. <laughs> it wasn't for me. And um, so, what are you? What are you? Uh, what are you manufacturing? So uh, the jacket I'm wearing is the first. I am so I made. stoked on this. <laughs> I like seriously. The jacket is the is the first jacket and I made. Um, the whole line is cruelty free, which is something that's uh, really important to me. And I feel like it's yeah. You know. It's so easy nowadays, like, there's just no excuse anymore why yeah. it can't be. So, um... That's great. Yeah, so, but also, as far as a vegan leather jacket goes, it's so hard to find a good one because a lot of them, like, the snaps don't work or the pockets are fake or, like, they just cut or they some don't have inside corners pockets. with them. Yeah, double inside pockets. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> when you don't want to carry a purse at a show or something, it works great. Yeah. Um... And then I'm doing some denim right now uh, yeah. that's getting sampled up. So we're doing like a denim jacket. Cool. It's basically like classics that you yeah. can dress up and do whatever you want with, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'm also doing oh leggings. God. Those actually, I just arrived this week. But they double wow. as workout pants. What? Which, okay, so when you I get, get a me some older, of those. <laughs> you like puffier pants, you know? Yeah. And um, leggings are... I don't know, just super diverse anyway. But I'm doing rad ones like zebra and like different animal prints. Cool. Did like this black on black snake skin that looks rad too. What, what so. got you to the? Well, what got you to manufacturing the jackets? Well, mainly just because all the jackets I would see, they didn't. They were missing something. All of them were missing something. Yeah. And, um, like you said, with the inside pockets, yeah. you didn't have inside pockets. You have a really good fit. Uh, the fit. It's very, like, custom to yeah, you, you know? Yeah, you know, and just everything being functional and just, you know, I mean, it's, I've always rocked moto jackets and yeah. just, I feel like I've been selling them for a long time and no matter how many I get in, there's just still something I wanted to do differently. So, 
you going from retail to manufacturing is a huge leap and a lot of people yes. don't make that leap ever right so it's a it's a challenging one <laughs> yeah and then going to that i mean it, it sounds like to me like you saw uh, a room like room for improvement and instead of just saying you know what this is the way things are you actually took it upon yourself to say you know what i'm actually going to do something about this because there's a, there's there's room here to improve yeah and then you're bringing these rad vegan leather jackets on the market so even if people that are not vegan and stuff like that versus going out and buying yeah. a, a brand new uh cow leather or something like that you know what i'm saying they're gonna pick this leather jacket because of the way it looks because it's fitted Just because it's got it the offers. inside pockets and everything else like right that's amazing so to me i consider that like i consider you a serial entrepreneur because <laughs> you're starting these different businesses yeah you know you're not just doing the pop-up shop anymore you got the brick and mortar right um you got the jewelry line and everything else and stuff that you're doing right now you got this going on and everything i mean uh, how do you is it just it sounds like but is it just like the passion of it that brings you in and, and like how do you get to, to that point of actually doing all of that well i definitely think i have the personality that gets bored easily. <laughs> so I guess I like to always have new things, um, mm -hmm. new things that I'm working on. I constantly like stuff in the works. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big part of it too. But I mean, you, you have a retail store. It's like, well, if you want to grow more, which, where do you go? You open mm -hmm. more stores, you start making what you sell. I mean, mm -hmm. there's feel like there's very few directions you can choose, yeah. which honestly I want to do all of them. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm starting I'm sure you're with. Gonna do it. <laughs> I, I would love to open another location. It's yeah. definitely high on the list of future things. Um, but definitely making my own stuff. I was like, I want to try this out. You know, I yeah. mean, the worst that can happen is I end up with some some stuff that takes a while to sell, right? But yeah, in the yeah. meantime, I thought it would be really cool. Um, maybe in the future we'll wholesale it too, um, just because you know when you start manufacturing, yeah. there's high minimums and stuff like that um and what's the name for the jackets cyanide cyanide, cyanide. brand yeah so it is a separate brand name because mm -hmm. the vibe isn't 100 percent dead yeah. rockers it's still going to be sold here yeah um but i wanted to keep it a little more broad to just anyone that's into rock and roll or alternative culture in general not just punk rock or you know I don't yeah. want to close it in. So I'm keeping it a little more broad with the classic staples, like a classic moto, denim, yeah. things like that. So it's going it, to, it's more broad for sure. So one thing that I really noticed is, one, what you just touched on right now is you're thinking about who's going to be my customer, what am I actually trying to do, and you're branding everything separately versus just blanketing it all under dead rockers, which you could have easily have done, right? Like that would have been like yeah. the easy route in a way because now you're having to build customer base for all these individual things the social media everything else that goes right. behind it and one thing that i'd really notice is your social media game is like out of this world with your branding oh, thank you. and it, <laughs> it 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 like it just lures you in like i'm always looking at it and i'm like how is she thinking about all this stuff how is she getting all these like pictures and and everything else like is branding something that comes naturally to you like that thought process of doing that or I wouldn't say it comes naturally, but mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not one of those people, and I, I've tried, but I, some companies, they plan out their social media like weeks in advance, right? Yeah. Like they have a calendar, like this is what I'm going to wow. post every day. <laughs> I feel like I have way too much going on that that, it would actually probably help me, but I'm usually like, oh man, like we just got this in, like I need to promote it, like I should do something now. Yeah. I do try to play, like when we have sales and stuff like that, it's a few more weeks ahead for like email marketing and stuff yeah. like that, you know, when I have time to think yeah. it out. But like when the holidays come, it's like you yeah. think you're going to have all this time to plan all this stuff and you don't, and you're just like, man, I just need to get it out you're there in gone. the world. Yeah, yeah, so I definitely think because because Dead Rockers has grown the way it is, and it is the biggest of the three, yeah. that it takes the most focus. So okay. Les Glett and Cyanide do suffer on the social media realms a little bit more. I don't post as much. I'm not as active. Um, but I, I try to make it so that when you do post, the content keeps people engaged for, a, like, a week or two yeah. or like you're putting something out there that's not just like a one day thing yeah i don't i don't it's I not something you're gonna flip that. by or yeah. something yeah if you're gonna do that then i just do it like in instagram stories or something that's not gonna last as long but like i i do when i actually post put a little <laughs> overthought into it and like you know what you're gonna say and everything like that and i want it to be a really good shot 
yeah. you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, well, that's powerful, though, because that's... I think that's, it's important. Yeah. yeah it, it's, you, I look at other pages, and they just are posting, like, random stuff all the time. And, yeah. And I there's think no, There's no... It, thought into what's going to happen yeah. with the with the person on the other side that's actually looking at it. It, it makes me lose interest. As, yeah. as a consumer, it makes me lose interest. 100%. So, that, that's what you just scroll by. Yeah. Right? And social media now is everything. It it's really is. Huge. Because not only does it eliminate borders to entry for a lot of people, you know, people are starting businesses just off of social media, yeah. shipping stuff right out of their houses and everything else. And I think having that dedication to it and really you know, capturing your audience is something that obviously you've done very well, but it, and it is so important and everything else. So, uh, what, what are two tips that you could give the audience for, you know, what, we, <laughs> what would you do on social media? Um, I definitely think that you have to respond to people is a big thing. Yeah. Um, no matter how big you get, mm-hmm. I see a lot of companies that are like no DMS and like, I understand that that becomes something that it's, it's time consuming, but I also think it's very important to connect on that. Yeah. Like you're connecting with them on a more personal level. Yeah. Um, and I think people 100%. appreciate that, yeah. you know, like even sometimes when people DM and I reply, they're like, Hey, like, thanks for, thanks for taking the time to do that. Cause I think a lot of companies don't do that, Yeah. you know, but it, like, it's just like if they were to email you in a yeah. way, I mean, I'm not saying you have to be on there 24 seven and get back to them immediately, but you know, reply or if they're commenting, if they're taking time out of their day to comment yeah. on your stuff. But that also in turn improves your engagement because the more people that comment or like your posts or whatever, the more you it start gets to grow. spread because yeah. of how the algorithm works. So yeah. I do think that's an important thing. Um, I also think that um, Instagram should be curated to like how you want people to view your business. Like if you okay. want them, like, on a well-rounded spectrum like don't only post you know three of your products or whatever like post everything post a shot of everything in it yeah i don't know if I, then you have continuous content sense. and everything else yeah you know like give people the bigger picture like we yeah. carry over four thousand things in here wow like if i i could just post one thing a day yeah <laughs> it's so boring yeah yeah yeah, me, yeah you know and we have so many different spectrums of stuff like we have records but we also have like purses so it's like I don't know. How do you capture that all in one? Like, set it up. Do cool shots of everything, you know? Um, So, yeah, I guess for social media, I think email marketing is a huge thing that people forget about, too, in small businesses because it is a whole extra thing. But for me, it's been huge. And you were learning this stuff years ago, too. Yeah. The email marketing. Contact seminar. (laughs) Dude. That's how I learned it, though. Seriously, it was actually, I was working at a hair salon at the time, and we started talking about it, and it was a free seminar. They host them all the time, too. And I went to it, and I was a total outcast there, and I sat in the back with my little notepad, and I learned everything about email marketing, so... Yeah, yeah. And I think for some people too, it's just getting yourself to that step. Like you're you're not born with these skill sets, right? Like you have no, to get you out there, you learn. have to learn it, you have to put yourself Constantly out there. Too. Yeah, and there's so much free content out there now that I feel like if you're not out there trying to learn it, then you probably just don't want it enough, right? Yeah. So to to the person trying to say, okay, so let's say to the person that has the idea, probably already got the pop up shop going. What would you what, what is some advice that you'd be able to give them from your trial and errors and everything else? I think first and foremost, don't quit your day job. You have to have another source of income. Like yeah. a lot of people, like I said earlier, they just want to like, oh, I'm over my other job. I just want to do this full time. And like, yeah, of course you do because yeah. it's what you want to do. Yeah. But in the meantime, you probably have bills to pay. Yeah. Uh, you know, and yeah. you probably don't have an investor or, you know, things like that. So, yeah you have to support yourself in the process too. And if you don't and you suck all the money out of the business you're trying to build, that business is going to fail because it has nothing to keep going. And what I've seen is a lot of people that put their back up against the wall like that so quickly, they're not doing the passion thing anymore. They're doing it as a necessity and they become a salesperson real quick. Yeah. And everybody can smell that. And when you're just trying to push, 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 it doesn't let the brand grow and organically Organic's do its huge thing. huge with it, too, you know? You know? I you're mean, forcing it in a way, you know? Yeah, and it, you're right. It doesn't... 
it doesn't have the outcome you're going to want. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For sure. So we got, uh, we got you going on the road for 2020. What other uh, things do we have to look forward in 2020? You said you're going to manufacture yeah. some more stuff. We're going to launch some more products with cyanide for sure. So we're doing some photo shoots, setting stuff up for that now. Awesome. Um, that's awesome. Definitely down the I'll road. I'll be a model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our newest model. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> definitely down the road, I, I think a second location. I've, as yeah. much as I, I love... I love being in Long Beach. I don't think I'll ever leave. I'm going to ask you off camera what areas. I'm not going to... Okay. Sh- I don't want to ask on camera. Somebody's going to be like, I'm going to open up a shop. Yeah, yeah, there's a... Somebody's going to quit their job and open up a shop. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, right. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I just... I've, I, this store is bursting at the seams. I've definitely outgrown the space, but I'm in a killer location, so That's I'm not going to leave. Thing. So, yeah, no, it's a it's a great problem to have and it's a yeah. problem I never thought I would have yeah so, um, but problems. yeah definitely down the road a second yeah. location would be would be cool but like I said I'm not a risk taker so it'll be a slow process but it'll happen can I <laughs> can I ask you I'm very much an energy and mindset type of person what got you into the mindset of doing all this like, from the very beginning, what got you to start working right away? I mean, was it because you saw your mom as pretty much a single mom? Uh, you know, because your dad, I know he wasn't really in the picture and everything else. And you just saw her hustling. Like, what got you on that level to just start doing everything at such an early age while most of us were just trying to figure out how we we're going to get to the next show, which is you. <laughs> but, <laughs> which is you driving. <laughs> which is you driving. But, like, seriously, like, what got you into that mindset of, like, going out there and really just creating this and making it happen when so many people sit there and they wish they could do all these things? A lot of dreamers, really, and people aren't bringing their dreams into reality, and you're living a life by design right now, you know, and I love that, you know? A lot of people don't know where to start, and I didn't either at all. I spent a lot of time, honestly, on the internet researching stuff, um, looking at what other people were doing and trying to pick up on what worked for them, what I thought would work for me. I mean, ultimately, you're going to tailor it to be exactly what works for you. You can't take anyone else's thing and and do exactly that. But... um, I think, yeah, having a hustler as a mom was a big part of it. She was always like, you know, you're going to have to support yourself and you have to do this. No one's going to give it to you. I think a lot of that was very embedded in me. That sense of being independent. very. Yeah, I've always been a pretty independent person, too. Like you said, I started driving, like, right away. Like, I was ready to go, had places to go. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Um, But, yeah, it's, it's kind of a trip how... Yeah, I don't know. I just kept going with it. And once they saw that, I was like, wow, maybe it could keep doing this what if I could only do this you know it's it just it excited me it just kept going and growing yeah and growing it excited and growing. me and I I ran with it and I'm still I'm still running <laughs> yeah you're like I'm still running right now um yeah I'm still I'm still learning all the time though you That's know awesome. you can't ever stop learning because yeah. no matter what industry you're in it's always going to change Things are always going to grow and things are going to go away so you got to keep up with everything mm-hmm. you know even in a niche market like I am. Mm-hmm. There's trends. There's things that change. Yeah. There's you know technology. Paying attention that comes to that stuff is it. key. You have yeah. to. Yeah, you gotta 100%. be in tune with it. But I think when you when you love something and you're passionate about yeah. it and you care about it, that's easy. Yeah, you're you know? in it. Yeah. yeah, you're in it. You're, you're I'm like emerged in it all the time. Yeah, it's, it's part of my life. It's been a huge part of my life for so long. It's yeah. like, you know, it comes. I guess that part comes naturally. There it is. <laughs> do you do you read any books or anything like that, or are you a podcast person? Or honestly, I love magazines. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, yeah, well, I didn't I'm going to really say that. Magazine <laughs> person, but I do read. Yeah, yeah, you have to read all the time. I I subscribe to a lot of um, online blogs and articles and stuff that I like that come out too. Um, huh. That's cool. Uh, Shopify has some really great ones for uh, business owners. Awesome. Just in general, even outside of retail, I think they apply. So to somebody people. could start there. Just yeah. start getting Sign into that stuff. Start reading. Just start getting the the mindset and kind of just you know doing exactly what you're saying. Just, yeah. just kind of submerge yourself in it. And Definitely. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's that's that's a good first step for sure. Okay, I did that cool. a lot. Spent a lot of time, like I said, on the internet reading. Yeah. You know, seeing what worked and what didn't. 
So um, social media platforms, what are you most active on if somebody was trying to get in touch with you or trying to see what Dead Rockers is doing and stuff? Definitely Instagram. Uh, Instagram's the biggest one for us. We post the most on there, but we do have okay. everything on our Instagram automatically go to our Facebook too. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I definitely feel like fine tuning which channels work for you and focusing on those is a huge thing. People try to be like Twitter, Pinterest, everything like all at once and it's too much. Yeah. So Pinterest is actually really great for us. Too. I had no idea Pinterest huge. was like, I yeah. mean, I, I use Pinterest because I like to go on there and, and look at stuff, but yeah. I've never put anything on there. And you said that that's, we get a ton of hits from Pinterest. Yeah. And wow. the way that Shopify is integrated, you can get direct sales through it too. So, okay. um, that's pretty cool too. But yeah, Instagram's definitely our biggest channel and it's just, uh, at dead rockers. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, any last words? Um, that sounded kind of morbid. Any last funny. words? I love morbid things. Um, brunch. I would love to go to brunch. Let's do this. That's my last Let's word. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> Let's wrap it up and go to brunch. Dude, thank you so much. Of this course. is fucking yeah, awesome. I love you, dude. <laughs> All right. 16 years.